Today on Dylan Talks Town, we're going to talk about using a multimeter. Hi, my name is Dylan and this is Dylan Talks Tone. And uh, if you're new to this channel, this is where we talk all about guitar tone and guitar setup and guitar repair and all this kind of stuff. And so today, we're going to kind of take it back, kind of back to the basics. I didn't realize until we were doing our live show on YouTube on Monday night, uh, this last Monday night at 9 p.m., somebody asked a question about actually just the basic usage of a multimeter and doing some basic troubleshooting on our guitar. I'll put a link in the comments below to a basic multimeter that gives us basic functions that'll help us to be able to do any kind of troubleshooting that we may need to do on our guitar before we go to the shop or maybe it'll help us to do repairs on our own. We'll go to baby cam and uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so let's look at the basic multimeter. So this is just a simple, inexpensive multimeter that we can buy pretty much anywhere. We'll throw a link to a couple of them in the description of this video. And basically all we're looking at here is voltage. There's some frequency stuff, temperature, there's a bunch of stuff that doesn't really matter for what we're doing. I basically like to use the auto ranging resistance measurement right here. See that little thing that looks like a mushroom? That is the symbol for ohms for those of you that may not be familiar with that. You notice how on the screen here it says OL. That just means that it's open. So that means that the meters are not touching anything else or touching each other. Now there's a couple of different things that we're going to be looking for as we do these measurements. Typically on a guitar, when we are troubleshooting a guitar, we're going to look for opens. We're going to look for direct shorts, which means when you touch something and it basically doesn't have a component between it, it's just a direct line, right? Like a direct wire, a direct short, or a direct connection. So a lot of times the failures in a guitar are when something is not connected, so it's open when it's supposed to be. Or it's possible that it's connected, all zeros, when it's supposed to be open. We'll go ahead and I'll show you in practical terms how we're going to check that on a guitar cable and how we're going to check that on the output jack, on a switch, on some pots, and our pickups, which is going to basically be most of your measurements and troubleshooting that you're going to have to do on a guitar on any given day. So let's get right into it. Let's start with the cable first. All right, so let's talk about probably one of the biggest failures in guitar stuff, and that is our cables, right? We think something's gonna work, and we're gonna scratch a thing, maybe it stops and starts, we don't know. This is the very first place you start, and I'll tell you why. It moves around the most, it gets bent the most, it gets run over the most, stepped on, stomped on, all that kind of stuff, okay? So let's start with that. So let's talk about how to test a cable. Now I've got a very, very short one here, so it should make it kind of easier for us. What we want is the tips of these. See how you got a tip and then you got the sleeve, right? So basically we want to make sure that the tip and the sleeve do not connect to each other. So OL, okay? Okay, so then now what we want to check is to make sure that the tip of each one is connected to each other. See, remember zeros means connection. How about let's check the sleeve. Zeros means connection. Now, on a longer cable, what you're gonna wanna do is kinda hold them like that and wiggle it around because sometimes if the cable's bent right in here, then that means that you have a problem and you don't know that if it's laying perfectly still. So wiggle it around a little bit while you've got those probes held on there and that'll give you an idea if the cable is bad or good. Let's move on to the guitar itself. All right, so we'll go back over here to baby cam. When we start to think about troubleshooting a guitar with a multimeter, the first stop we probably want to make is the output jack because if we know it's not the cable, then working our way backwards through the guitar is probably the best way to do it. So our cable is good. We've just checked our cable. So go ahead and use your cable. And I like to use a nice short one like this. Plug it into the guitar. 
because what we're gonna do is, let's say we're playing the guitar and something's cutting out and we're not really sure. Is it a volume pot? Is it a tone pot? Is it the switch? Is it one of our pickups? I get calls all the time, I think I have a bad pickup. Starting at the outside of the guitar and working our way in, just like we talked about, let's do this, is we'll take our probes and we'll put them across the cable. Now when we do this, we gotta make sure that our volume and our tone knobs are all the way up. So we're bridge position, volume and tone all the way up, our probe's on there, and 5.7K, which is right about what the bridge pickup on this guitar is supposed to be. Very low output bridge pickup. Now, let's switch it over to the neck and we'll do the same thing. And now we have 8K, so that makes that correct because that's what that neck pickup is supposed to be. Now we go in the middle. It's gonna basically be half of the middle of those. So 3.4, that makes sense. And here's why that is, is because this guitar is lit, is, is uh, in parallel. So it would basically be half of one of the pickups more or less. So the bottom line is we've, we've measured this. We don't have any opens. We don't have any straight to zero. And when we select the pickups, we can see it change to the value of the perspective of the respective pickup. That means we know that the switch is working. What if the switch was not working when we were checking this? What if it was going all over the place? What if it didn't hold a measurement steady? Well then what we could do is go ahead and hold our probes on the tip and the ring of our cable again like this and let's just leave it on the neck pickup and then what we could do is sweep our volume pot down to zero and see how it goes almost all the way down to zero and then as we sweep it up so the volume pot works now here's what can happen sometimes you can get in zones of this thing now if I move this really quick it's gonna show open for a second but you could get in zones of the volume pot where it kind of cuts out and it starts to not work then it's possible that your volume pot is broken the volume pot is gonna pick the volume pot is gonna affect all pickup positions neck, middle, and bridge. If we have one position that doesn't work, chances are it's the switch. If we think the switch is good, how do we check it from there? Then we have, at that point then, we have to go one step further and open up the guitar. Up until this point, we've done our basic checks just with the cable plugged into the jack. So now, let's say the neck pickup's not working. We're not really sure if it's the switch or the neck pickup. So now what we have to do is open up the guitar. All right, so then what we would do is we would find where our neck pickup and the ground to it, figure out where the neck pickup is hooked up and it tests good at the pickup where it hooks up to the switch, but it's still not working. That must mean the switch is bad. So it's a little bit back and forth to make sure that you get what you're looking for here, but that's the idea. Work your way from the outside on in to the guitar. Tone pot doesn't work. <clears throat> the very first thing I would check on the tone pot is to see if the tone pot itself is grounded. And remember how we do that. Just make sure that the tone pot on the back of the tone pot is grounded. All zeros. Zero means good in this case. So that means that the tone pot is grounded. If the tone pot does not work and it is grounded correctly, it's possible that the pot is bad. Capacitors hardly ever go bad. They hardly ever, ever go bad. Just kind of a recap, because I know this is a lot. First of all, check your cable. Continuity of the cable, make sure it's good. Second, work your way in using the cable and making sure that when you turn the volume pot up and down, it works relatively smooth, smoothly and you can see the resistance rise and fall. On 10, it's gonna be, you're gonna see basically the value of whatever, more or less, the value of whatever pickup you're on, on your selector. And at zero, you're gonna see zero. You're gonna see a short. Once you've figured out that your volume pot is sweeping pretty good, then put everything on to 10, still testing here at the cable, flip through your pickup selector and make sure that it looks like your pickup selector is doing what it's supposed to. Yep, that looks pretty good about what the neck is doing. That's half of everything, so that makes sense. Now that looks like what the bridge pickup is doing. Okay, so we know that the switch is working, but your neck pickup still doesn't work. At that point, then you go ahead and take it out and check right across where the pickup hooks up to the switch. Now, 
you will find many, many times that it is not the pickups themselves or the switch itself, but it's a bad soldering joint. Something has moved around, something is touching that's not supposed to. So just make sure that everything looks like it's in place before you start cutting stuff apart and changing parts. Hopefully this has been a little bit of a help to give you kind of a basic run through using a multimeter to go through your guitar and at least do some basic checks. This is what I would have you do if you called me on the phone and said, I'm having a problem with my guitar. I'd say, get your multimeter. So if you don't have one, I'll put one in the link in the description below, get yourself one. And then if you have a problem and you call me and say, hey, I'm having a problem, I'd say, get your multimeter. And these are the measurements that we would check before we started taking things apart and making you spend money on stuff that you might not have needed. My name is Dylan, this has been Dylan Talks Tone. If you have an idea for a video like this or a question about any of this stuff having to do with guitar tone or how guitars work or any of that kind of stuff, leave it in the comments below and I will make a video just for you. Do me a favor, go down there and subscribe and hit that bell button. We put out a live show on Monday night, every night at nine o'clock and we put a video out every Wednesday and every Friday. I know that there is something on this YouTube channel, if you like guitars, that you will dig. So do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, hit the little bell, and we'll talk to you soon.